I haven't woken up feeling jubilant. I've woken up feeling quite sick and right. sad. Why this is, is that? A day, this is a day of shame for our country. Regardless of the extortionate cost, um, the unlikely effect as a deterrent, the uh, issue of international illegality, we are breaking several conven- international conventions by implementing, uh, by um, passing this legislation. Regardless of the issues around the actual safety of Rwanda and the uh, the very um, uh, many issues about the uh, actual uh, possibility of implementing this legislation, I have, um, I am particularly dismayed having read um, a an answer by the Home Office to a freedom of information request made by um, investigative international I think they're called mm-hmm. after the um, the, the uh, failed flight um, of um, asylum seekers these are not migrants they are okay. specifically asylum seekers in which we get a description of what actually happened on the runway. And I hope Mr Sunak's eyes are on the runway, because what he will see... Would this be when the convicted rapist was allowed off the plane? Sorry, this, yes, this, this exactly. Was when the, yeah, so you yeah. celebrate the fact that a convicted rapist was allowed off the plane? No, not the convicted rapist, no. A man from Iraq who was the victim of torture. No, I'm not talking about convict. Of course I don't celebrate, that's outrageous. Why, I'm talking about a convicted... Why do you suppose the United Nations I'm, settle people in Rwanda? They settled, and if you go to that uh, specific um, um, uh, event, it happened, I can't quite remember, after the Syrian, um, the war in Syria, during the war in Syria. They're not there now, but they have used Rwanda for some years. They have used Rwanda. So why why do you suppose, if it is hell on earth, why would the United Nations use it, Barbara? Mr Ferrari... You can call me Nick. Most of those, Nick, Nick, most of the Syrians that went, most of the people that went from Syria to Rwanda to some United Nation refugee camps yes. were later uh, accepted. I, in I agree. No, it was almost like a transit camp, but why would the they, u- why would the they vast, use it at all? Why would the, the UN use maj- it? The well, vast majority of it. people in the camps are from neighbouring Congo, by, uh, no, no, in which, by the way, the Rwanda... You're not why would they use the it? Because... Because, because it's a safe country. Otherwise, I appreciate they use it as a transit camp, not for permanent settlement, as the United Kingdom is. But they wouldn't go near if it was the hell that you're describing, Barbara. It is not a hell. There are relatives hells, relative hells. It is probably not a, a, a hell from for people who maybe have been displaced from neighbouring countries such as Congo. 90% of the people in the camp in Rwanda are Congolese. By the way, Rwanda is financing a war in Congo. This is not a safe country. Okay. Well, the Lords have finally accepted that it is a safe country. Barbara, I'm grateful for your view. Richards in Crowborough. Do you share Barbara's anger this morning? Good morning. Uh, No, not at all, actually. In fact, um, you know, I don't mean to be uncharitable, but I think there's a, if I may say so, there's a little bit of naivety there, if I may say so. Uh, the only thing I think is really that, if you'll allow me, I think I'd like to just say why I think that the Rwanda policy will be a deterrent. Go ahead. Actually, um, I think it's probably not so much the odds of actually being put on a plane being a deterrent. I think these people are selling a pitch. They're basically saying, look, you know, you get to England, you'll get health care, you'll get work, you know, they need people. And they're selling a product, basically. But they're also saying, oh, well, they'll never send you to Rwanda. That's never going to happen and all the rest of it. And if one plane goes, just one, um, they'll start to ask themselves, these poor people, you know, well, if they're lying about that, what else are they lying about? Right, OK. It breaks the trust barrier, if you see what I mean. OK. I can find a lawyer to fight anything if I want to. <laughs> but that's just a silly, disparaging no, thing can. to say. Oh, come on, no, no, I can. Come on. Let, let, me, let me try and ca- counter that. Laws are not made by lawyers. <laughs> lawyers. Laws are made, hopefully, through a democratic process whereby we elect our representatives to pass laws that are... But you'll always you know, find a lawyer to defend no, you no, no, on complete. anything, Catherine. But that's that is simply. I mean, that's simply not true. Oh, what, how what, many times why, why have you, enga- how many times have you engaged solicitors? I've lost count of the number of times. I've lost well, count. Well, that might say something. That might yeah, say more whether about whether for family you. law, no, whether I'm suing banks, of, whatever. I can find a lawyer to fight anything. 
Can I answer you? That might say more about you, Nick, well, than yeah, about the maybe. legal system. Yeah, yeah I like a yeah. fight. I love you know, a fight. <laughs> you clearly do, but you also like a, a, a chummy chat yeah. with your guest, Michael Tomlinson, yeah. who, when you asked him what is the cost of, you know, isn't it an, an expensive project? And my goodness, it's eye wateringly expensive. As is the hotel his, accommodation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so his answer to that was. Well, doing nothing is even more no. expensive. Catherine, and, yeah, he also said actually, £6 million a day. Yes, because the, the reason that is so expensive, one of the main reasons, is if you do something very slowly and very inefficiently, and you yourself have covered that yes. on a number of occasions, how months. slow, how yeah. inefficient. Months you know, I know asylum cases that have taken three years yeah. and have been punctuated, for example, with... Home office appointments in which they forgot but, to instruct an interpreter, yeah, or they no, forgot to send. So, if you are extremely inefficient and bad at doing something, like Thames Water, for example, yeah. do you turn around and say, "Oh, actually, the best thing we can do is throw loads more money at it"? You know, do something properly the first time. If it's still a pro- if it's still a problem, by all means, we'll put our heads together. But for him to answer that question so disingenuously by saying. The cost of doing nothing is expensive. Well, no, I, I just, he, he did also well, he point did, to the he hotel He actually cost. did say that. No, he, no, he, he has also the outlined of, the hotel play cost. Play it back. Nick, play it back. He, he said the cost of he, doing nothing. He did. Those were his words, but not he'd mine. Also, he'd already referenced the £6 million a day. Yes, of course, yes, because... But, no, no hotel costs six million pounds a day. No, 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 no. Of course it's no. It's because of... No, I but appreciate that, but it's the numbers years, involved. Years and years of... of inefficiency is expensive. I agree, but you're, I, 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 the, the one thing that you and I... I don't know why you think just because some lawyers can be found to oppose it, it makes it wrong. Look, well, look, maybe, look, maybe how, look how many lawyers will law. appear in maybe courts today defending the found. indefensible. But <laughs> what, what, what is indefensible about this to well, you? Well, I mean, you've had lawyers defend Peter Sutcliffe, for God's sake, and Harold Shipman. You'll always find a lawyer... To def- I mean, it is a fact of life. Now, I appreciate in those cases, you have to give the man, in both cases they were men, Lucy Letby, a woman, you have to give them some kind of defence. But just because there's a lawyer, honestly, I think, Catherine, it, it, we can do better than that. I want to know how France and Germany do it, but France recently, the um, president signed an order to throw a geese guy, he's been there about 30 years, and just boot them out. And they don't give a damn about the European Court of Human Rights. Just ignore them. They can't do anything to us. Well, I don't, I don't think Britain out. does that. I don't think we're the sort of country that ignores these courts. I know. They just tell you to buy every... I mean, all the rest of Europe do it. Sweden's booting them out now, left, right and centre. Well, They're I, kicking them out. Where are they kicking them out to? Sending them back. Oh, OK, I haven't, them all. all right, OK. And, and, all right, I'll have to... I'll have mass to look deportations there. going on there. It's, I mean... It can't carry on the way it is. And that guy before said about Australia. Australia stopped the boat. You know that. I know that. It stopped. Well, that's how I perceive it, yeah. It was one, actually one of the few successes, yes. It was. A t- and the Australian Prime Minister at the time, he says it's a right thing. We decide who comes to Australia. Not any other country, any foreign court. We decide. George, thank you. I'm, I'm dead against the, the bill for all sorts of moral reasons, and I think those in opposition to it are obviously happy to put forward a compelling moral case. The problem is those who are in support of this bill don't really care about the moral argument. So I think we need to probably make a bit more of a, a, bit more of a legal argument on this. And I heard you say to the first caller, Barbara, mm. that you know the UN uses Rwanda as a transit country. Um, you, I don't know if it still is, but it has certainly used it, yes. Has used yeah. Has used, but I, 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 I think does. it's a bit of a false equivalency, Nick. Um, and the reason why is because obviously you did mention we're not the, the deal that we're putting in place with them is not to use them as a transit country. That's correct. But you know the the whole point of Rwanda being ruled an unsafe country is not because we think that it's hell on earth and that it's uninhabitable for people to live there. The whole point of why it's unsafe is because we do not have any guarantee that Rwanda will ensure that refugees we send there will be kept there. We have no real guarantees in place that they will not just put refugees on a plane once they receive them from us, which we are paying them for, back to the place that they are seeking refuge from. And I think that is the key issue. I thought that assurance has now come from Rwanda. 
Well, we can have assurances from them in, in you know, in whatever form, but do we really do we really have a guarantee? Do we really have a well, guarantee? We go, Who's I mean, going to be monitoring this? How much money is it going to cost us? And how much time are we going to have to spend ensuring that they are not simply transiting the, back to where they came from? I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that that's something that's going to be guaranteed. Well, we have been, I mean, again, I don't know how it will be monitored, but you're absolutely right. This was one of the hurdles that was cleared I think, earlier this year or at the back end of last year that these people wouldn't sort of effectively be removed on, as it was, and we have assurances. So we can only surely take them on their word for that. Otherwise, what deterrent will there ever be, Rob? Well, I don't, I don't think this has proven to be a deterrent. Obviously, there was... Well, what there would was you some do if, you wouldn't, if you wouldn't do this? What would you do? I think it's quite, it's quite clear what we need to do is obviously deal with the problem at source and try and crack down on the actual gangs that are, you know... Organising this travel but for doing people. That now. I mean, it's, it's not as if no one's thought of that. They are trying. I appreciate they're not doing a very good job of it. Rob, thank you.